Okay guys, here we go. We are starting Unit 2, Video 5. This is Part A. It's just there's too much information for me to squeeze in, and I want to make sure that you understand the subtle differences in the problems. So, before we start though, you want to grab your graphing calculator and choose your mode. Um, and it's all because you are going to experience fraction exponents. And <clears throat> the way MathPrint handles them is slightly different than classic mode. They will both get the job done. But you kind of have to make a choice what, what you prefer. And it doesn't matter to me. Um, so anyway, uh, as you go through this video, you might want to punch in the numbers pause the video, punch in the numbers with your calculator, and see if you're getting the same answers. And if you're not, maybe it's because you're entering something in a little bit incorrectly or the calculator doesn't understand you. That might lead you to pick a certain mode over another mode. I know that there are some times when I will switch between the modes um, to make my life easier. But for this very first part, I'm going to break this down. This is... My outline of this, the first thing you're going to see here is equations with radicals. And you might say to yourself, what does that mean? And I would say something like this. I have a couple examples I just want to get uh, written out, work them through. So let's look at this guy. This is an equation with radicals. Um, and you might say, well, why did you talk about all that fraction exponent chunk? Well, you'll see when I get to Roman numeral 2. So here we go. Equations with radicals. Here is the universal truth of these. You want to isolate the radical. That's how you work these out. So they're not difficult. You pretend this is just like, I want to get this by itself. That's what you're going to do. So I'm going to add 5. And I add 5. I end up with 2 times the rad x plus 1 equals 12. This thing is not by itself yet. It's close, but it's not by itself. So I'm going to divide by 2. And then, let's just shift the action over here because I haven't used any of this space. I have the rad by itself. What does it equal? It equals 6. 12 divided by 2 is 6. What am I going to do then? This is the opposite of a cheerleader equation. You get the root alone, and then to get rid of this thing, you square the whole chunk. But if I square one side of the equation... I square the other side of the equation. When you square a square root, you get the creamy middle. You get whatever's there. On the other side, well, 6 squared is 36. If I subtract 1 from both sides, I'm done. And my answer is x equals 35. That is my answer. Now, um, the beauty of this is it's really not that difficult. Of course, everything in math, there are certain things where that can make it more difficult, but the basics in the whole concept here, it's not difficult stuff. So, you know what? Equations with radicals. I want to kind of go off of our last lesson, which was uh, doing inverses with things that have square roots, and I also did things that have cube roots. So for our class, we are going to, here's my second example. Let's look at this one. This guy's a cube root of x minus 1 plus 6 equals 10. So for, for our stuff, if I give you an equation with a radical in it, it'll either be a square root or a cube root. That's how I'm going to do it. Um, if you know how to do a square root, you could do a fourth root, a fifth root, whatever. You know, so um, it's either a two or a three we're going to use here. Guess what? I want to get the root alone. I'm going to take it away. Then I will have the root 
by itself, what's it going to equal? 4. 10 minus 6 is 4. Did I get this root alone? You better believe I did. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to cube this. Just like I did with a square root, I want to get rid of whatever's there. And how do you get rid of a cube root? You cube it. So I get the creamy middle. Yum. There it is. And then 4 to the third power is 64. It's just 4 times 4 times 4. You can use a calculator if you want, but that's what it is. I'm going to add 1, and I am going to call it a day. I'm going to say x equals 65. Isolate the root. That's all we're doing. That's it. Don't make it harder than it is. It's not difficult. Let's do this one. It's 5 cube roots of x plus 2 equals 3. All right. Now, here's the thing with this. Um, this is still the guy I want to isolate. Whatever has the root, that's the dude I get alone. Now, um, I call this... It's either rasbasaz or rakbasaz. Uh, wait a minute. Root alone. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> that should go here. <clears throat> I blew it. Hang on. Let me start over. I don't want to re-record this whole lesson just for this. But it should have been rakbasaz. Because it's fun to say, and it helps you remember what you're doing. You get the root alone. You cube both sides and solve. That's how you do it. You get the root alone, cube both sides and solve. Where I got com where I confused myself is when it's a square root, you rasbasaz. See, it's fun to say root root alone, square both sides and solve, or root alone, cube both sides. So you're either rakbasazing or rasbasazing. Here you're going to get the root alone, square, both sides, and solve. So I call it rakbasazing or rasbasazing. So since this guy's a cube, we're going to rakbasaz. So I'm going to move the two. I have five cube roots of x equals one. I'm going to divide both sides by 5 because that root is not alone. And then you go, wait a minute, now i got a fraction. That's okay, get over it. Fractions are people too. But what do I do? Well, you got the root alone, right? Cube both sides and solve. Rackbasaz. But then when you cube this, this is where math print might, you know, be your friend or whatever. But you'll notice I always put this side over here in parentheses when I cube it. I put this side in parentheses. It's a real good habit to get into because sometimes it's going to change the meaning of your statement. So, I know if you want to be in math print mode, you would do on your keystrokes on your calculator, it would be, let me trace this out for you, 1 divided by 5 to the power of, that's what that key is all about, the to the power is right below the clear button, and then you could take it to the third power. If you're in classic mode, you always play it safe, and you put the fraction in the parentheses, you know, to make sure it gets it. And if you do that with uh, your calc, you will probably get a decimal. Let me see what decimal I get here. Uh, da, 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 da. I am going to just punch this in, and yes, I got point zero zero eight. I've talked about this already, though. We can use the math frac function on your calculator on the left hand side. It says math. You want to math frac that. All the cool kids are math fracking things these days. And what do you get? You get one over one twenty five. I'm just going to tell you, I'm going to ask you to give me fraction answers on this. I don't want a bunch of decimals because they can get ugly looking. 
0.008, yeah, okay, but give me 1 over 125. Anyway, let's try another that I'm going to say looks a little bit different, but do not panic, because this is an easy-peasy situation. Now, you might say, but what about the root alone thing? What about root alone, square both sides and solve? See, here's the deal. These are square roots. We don't have to write the little 2 here. The only time you write this little number is if it is anything but a 2. So, in mathematics, I know that sometimes I will write something like x equals 5 for an answer. I don't write 1x equals 5. I don't need to write the 1. I don't write 1x over 1 equals 5. Heck, I don't write 1x over 1 to the first power equals 5. I just say x equals 5 when I answer questions sometimes. So, when stuff's not written in, it's okay. It's okay. I'm going to get rid of all this noise over here. I'm going to erase it. Get it out of my way. And I'm going to get rid of that thing there. And I don't need that little tiny 2 because it's understood that it's a square root if it's written that way. This guy is alone. Heck, this guy is alone. All you need is one root alone. That's all you need is a root alone. Square, both sides, and solve. We're going to rasbasaz. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take this whole thing here and square it. I'm going to take this whole thing here and square it. Whenever you square a square root, you get the creamy middle. Whenever you square a square root, you get the creamy center. There it is. Yum. Let's solve this thing. I'm going to move the x's. I got x minus 3 equals 5. I'm going to add the 3. And I'm going to say x equals 8. How awesome is that? x equals 8. Now, um, that is topic 1. And it lays out my strategy. When I see roots, I'm either going to rasbasaz or rakbasaz. That's what I'm going to do. The only type of equations I will give you will either contain square roots or cube roots at this point. Okay? But wait, there's more. What I need you to try for me on your calculator, and this is why I said make sure you have your calculator. I want you to try this. I know you know that if you punched in the square root of 4 on your calculator, it will say the answer is 2. It will. But what I want you to do now is I want you to punch in on your calculator 4 to the 1 half power. Now, depending on which mode you're in, you might have to put this in parentheses. I don't know. Math, print, and classic are slightly different sometimes. But if you punch that in correctly, you should get 2 again. Because here's the deal with this. Every number... You can write a 1 in on it if you want. I could write a 1 in right here. Any number, you can write a 1 in. But if it's a square root, like this, here's what this actually translates into. The square root of 4 is the same as 4 to the first power, second root. This right here is called fraction exponent form. And we have to play with this. We have to get good with fraction exponent form. So this is going to be our first venture into it. It's not hard. You just have to remember, if I give you something like this, I'm going to ask you to punch this uh, crazy, weird-looking number in on your calculator. 8 to the 5 thirds. Could you please punch that into your calculator? If you're in math print mode, it's going to look a little different. Classic mode, you're going to have to probably put that thing in parentheses. But if you do that correctly, you should get the number 243. 243. 
Now, I'm going to just look at mine, because I think I left mine in math print mode. Oh, shoot, not 243. I'm totally off my rocker. It's 32. What am I thinking? 32. Duh. 32. Sorry. 32. <laughs> I was thinking of this number. See, this number right here, also a weird, wacky, wild number, but that's 243. I don't know. That's 243. You want to try it? You could try it. Let's try it. I'm going to do it just to make sure I'm not insane. But I know I'm not insane because that's 243. See, here's what's happening. This bottom number in any fraction exponent is the root. This top number in any fraction exponent is the power. So, the bottom number says cube root. What times itself three times is 27? So 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. So that's what the bottom number is asking. So you go, what's the cube root of 27? The cube root of 27 is 3. What do you want me to do with that number? I want you to take the number 3 to the fifth power. Oh, well, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is 243. So over here, this one that I screwed up earlier, what times itself three times is eight? Well, that would be two. Two times two times two is eight. What do you want me to do with that two? I want you to take it to the fifth power. So I can do this with anything. The bottom number of any fraction exponent, the bottom number of any fraction exponent represents the root. The top number represents the power. So, what does that do for us? Well, let me tell you. I could give you this equation. And you're going to see it. When you get to the practice problems, some of the practice problems I wrote radical style. Some of them I wrote fraction exponent style. So you get used to both worlds. So here, it's a, this is a rasbasaz problem. This guy, I get the root alone. And then I square both sides and solve. So I get x equals 9. Well, let's look at the same thing over here. I want to get the fraction exponent stuff by itself. See, this is just another way to say the exact same thing. And then, if I take this guy and square it, this guy and square it, see, I'm multiplying this times this. What's half of 2? What is half of 2? It's 1. You mean x to the 1? Yes, that's what I mean. X to the first. Oh, what does that equal? Well, over here it equals 3 squared. Oh, it's 9. It's the same answer. See, you can write things in radical form, or you can write them in fraction exponent form. So I want you to understand that both forms are valid. So here we go. This is Roman numeral number 2. And this is going to be equations... with fraction exponents. And let's play with a couple more examples that look, you know, a little bit different here. I'm going to do this one. But wait, there's more. Let me write it down. Let's solve it. What is my job? Get this thing by itself. Whoever's got the little exponent, you want them isolated. So I'm going to take away 4. And I'm going to have this whole big chunk of junk to the one third. What's it going to equal? It's going to equal 4. I want to then cube 
this thing. And I'm going to cube this thing. If I take one-third times three, or one-third of three, one-third of three is one. One what? One of these. I get one of those. What does that equal? Four to the third power is just four times four times four. You could punch this into your calculator, you'll get 64. But I'm not done yet because I want to get x by itself. And I don't know about you, but I don't really ever write this little one in here. So I'm going to get rid of the one. And I'm just going to divide by 2 now because if I do, I will get x equals 32 because I've solved it. I'm done. Now, let's just play. Let's play. I got a couple more. I just want you to see that there's different ways I can make this look, but it's all the same stuff. This guy is going to look horrible. But I say, wait a minute, the thing with the exponent is already by itself. This stuff, there's nothing to move. It's all by itself. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to say, take this whole thing to the four-thirds power. What? What do you mean four-thirds power? Okay, this is the technique I'm actually using to solve every single one of these problems. It's called... Reciprocal power technique. Let me scroll back up for a little bit here. Just a second. What is the reciprocal of one-third? It's three. I used a three. That was a reciprocal of power. Up here, what is the reciprocal of one-half? It's two. I used a reciprocal power. So take a look here. What's the reciprocal of three-fourths? It's four-thirds. So if I do it to that side, I do it to this side. That's how it rolls. Because if you do three-fourths of four-thirds, whenever you say the word of in math, it means multiply. Three, whoops, I don't know where that mark came from. Three-fourths of four-thirds. What happens? Everything's going to cross-cancel here. This becomes one x plus 5 to the 1. Nobody says that. They just say x plus 5. But what's on the other side here? What is this thing equal? Punch it in on your calculator. Remember, if you're in classic mode, if you're in classic mode, you will probably have to make sure that you put parentheses on this stuff. If you're in classic mode... If you're in math print mode, chances are you do not have to do that, and you can still hit enter, you can still hit equals, and you will get an answer of 64. No, not 64. What am I saying? 81. Duh. See, I'm trying to do it in my head. And I'm... You should get 81 for that answer right there. 27 to the 4 thirds power is 81. And then what am I going to do? I'm going to move the 5 over. And I'm almost done. X equals whatever 81 minus 5 is, I believe that is 76. And there's my answer. I am done with that. Let's play one more. And then we're going to put together a couple things and call it a day. But let's practice this same concept. I'm going to use reciprocal power. Remember, that's what we're technically doing. The reciprocal of whatever that power is. Okay, so here we go. I have to get the thing with the power by itself. So I'm going to start this problem off by dividing by 2. And if I divide that by 2, I will get this thing with this power by itself. On the other side, I will get 32. 64 divided by 2 is 32. I'm going to take the reciprocal power of both sides. So I'm going to take this side right here and take it to the 2 fifths power. I'm going to take this side right here, take it to the 2 fifths power. 
What does that do on the left side? All this junk cross cancels. That's why I'm doing it. I get x minus 1 to the first. Whoops, to the first. But nobody writes that 1 in, so I'm going to get rid of it. It's x minus 1. That's all I have left. I don't need to write in this little 1. But what does that do on the other side? Well, on the other side, i got to punch this into my calculator. 32 to the power of 2 fifths. And if I do that, I will get 4. Then I'm going to add 1, right? Because x minus 1 equals 4. Let's get the 1 over there. And I'm going to get x equals 5. Now, I'm going to say this. This is not horrible stuff. But how do you know if you're doing it right? Check your answers. Please check your answers. There is an answer key that you will see for this assignment. Don't keep moving forward if you're not getting things right. Okay, because I did not break this whole lesson up into separate videos uh, without some kind of reason. I still have to show you guys a couple things I haven't shown you. But they're based on stuff you just did. So, since we're in Fraction Exponent Town, let me keep this train rolling. I'm going to say... What up? Oh, really? What about even powers? Okay, even powers. These produce two correct answers. So I'm just going to go through a couple back to back and then we'll talk about them. So let's just practice here. But there, what about even powers? They produce two correct answers. Here, I'll, here's my next example. 3x to the 2 thirds minus 11 equals 37. Okay? So you're like, what would I have to plug into x to make this work out? Well, let's get there. What do you think I want to do? I want to isolate the thing that has the power. Now, here's the deal with this. This is, that's my power. 2 is the power. What is 3? Three? 3 is the root. If the power is even, you will create two answers that are valid. Let me show you. If I want to isolate the variable, I'm going to add 11. I'm going to. And I'm going to get 3x to the 2 thirds equals 48. Then I'm going to divide by 3. Because now I'm going to have x to the 2 thirds equals 16. I am going to use the reciprocal power. I'm going to take this side to the 3 halves power. I'm going to take this side to the 3 halves power. And when I do that, just think, you know, all this stuff is going to cross cancel. I get x to the first. That's what I get, x. What's it equal? It equals, why is it doing that? Okay, 16 to the 3 halves power. It is what? It's the square root of 16. That's 4. What do you want me to do with that 4? I want you to cube that number. So if you cube that number, what do you end up with? 64. Now that's what your calculator is doing for you. When you punch in 16 to the 3 halves power, your calculator is asking that question of itself. What is the square root of 16? And then what is the power of that result? That's what your calculator is ask, asking. Okay? So, um, I don't want to leave that question mark there. I don't want anyone to get confused. That is a root. The top one's a power. But, let's be more specific plus or minus 64. 
Okay, what do you mean plus or minus? Okay, when it's an even power, the phenomenon is this. It will create two correct answers. Let me explain. If I go back to the original and I check my answer, if I put regular 64 here, I would say order of operations. What is the cube root of 64? What times itself? 3 times 64? That would be 4. What do you want me to do with that 4? I want you to square it. That would be 16. So 64 to the 2 thirds. If I punch this in to my calculator, I'm going to get 16. 3 times 16 is 48. 48 take away 11 is 37. It's a valid answer. So I checked it. 64 is valid. Now, what if this was a negative 64? You got to be careful with your calculator. You will probably have to put this in parentheses if you want to because your calculator is notoriously bad with negatives. So I would say what number times itself three times is negative 64? And the answer would be negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4 is negative 64. It's true. What do you want me to do with that negative 4? I want you to square it. Well, you guys know if you square a negative, you get a positive. So I'd get 16 again. 3 times 16 is 48. 48 minus 11, I'm back to 37. So, this phenomenon happens when the power is even. What about even powers? They produce two correct answers. Now, I, you can scroll back up, or sorry, rewind the video, whatever, and you can take a look. Every problem that I have created up to this point, none of them had an even power. I didn't want to do those mixed in with the other ones because I want to make sure you get this. People forget this a lot. So, let's look at another one. Even powered problem. x to the fourth minus 1 equals 15. Okay, this is going to have two correct answers. It is. I am going to isolate this piece, so I'm just going to add 1. And I get x to the fourth. What does it equal? 16. Reciprocal power. I'm going to do this thing to it. I'm going to say 1 fourth. 1 fourth. Over here, what is a quarter of four? Hey, I get an X. This rhythm, I'm hoping, is established now. And then over here, 16 to the one-fourth. I punch it in my calculator, it's going to say 2. Plus or minus 2 is what I'm going to say, because I know that when it's an even power, both answers are going to be valid. Because if I punch 2 in to the original, if I put a 2 Right here, if I plug in 2 and I get 2 to the 4th minus 1, guess what? 2 to the 4th is 16. Take away 1, it's 15. Valid. But if I punch in negative 2, negative 2 to the 4th, now be careful, negative 2 to the 4th means negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, that is 16. But if you forget to put this in parentheses on your calculator, it will lie to you. Calculators are notorious for lying with negatives. Be careful of that. But guess what? Negative 2 times itself 4 times would also give me 16. 16 minus 1 is still 15 all day long. If it's an even power, you're going to get two answers. Now, does it always look like plus or minus this, plus or minus that? No. Sometimes it looks slightly different. But you're going to have time in the next video to practice, too. And, of course, if you ever get stuck on anything, remember, they pay me to answer questions for you so you can ask them in class. So here we go. Let's look at this one. I wanted to make one that looks kind of spooky. But you know what? I don't get scared easily because I know 
This is an even power. So I'm supposed to have a plus minus when I get to the end. I will. I'm also knowing that this is the thing I'm trying to get alone. So I'm going to move that 7 first. I'm going to get that thing. I'm going to start chipping away at all this stuff to get rid of it. Uh, what is that? Negative 32, I think. I'm going to divide by negative 2. And I'm going to get 3x quantity to the 4 thirds power equals... 16. And then I'm going to take this whole thing over here to the reciprocal power, so 3 fourths. I'm going to take this whole thing, 3 fourths. And then this is going to cancel city, and I get 3x. What's it equal? It equals, well, 16 to the 3 fourths. You can punch it in on your calculator. The answer is 8. But it's plus or minus 8. But I'm not done yet because x is still not alone, so I'm going to divide by 3. So my answer is x equals plus or minus 8 thirds. That's what I get. I get my answers because I had an even power. It's even. If that number is a power, if that power is even, you're going to get two answers. Woo! Okay, we're almost done, but we're not done yet. But I'm trying to build this in so the next video is easy to understand. So we're almost done. Roman numeral four, guess what? I got one more trick up my sleeve that I'm gonna include here. Let's talk about negative exponents. What? Yeah, it can happen. X to the negative three equals eight. What? Yeah. Well, here's the thing. The final objective is to have X equals answer. Now, you can see this is not an even-powered problem. It's not. It could be, but it's not. It's a negative 3. So I'm going to take this, and guess what? I'm going to use a 1 -third. That's the reciprocal, but I'm also going to use a negative. Because my job is, right here, when you do powers of powers, you're technically multiplying those two numbers. Negative 3 times negative 1 -third gets me... A positive 1, that's what I'm always after. I don't want x to the negative 3 equals. I want x equals. So anytime I can get it to say x to the first, that's the object of the game. So what am I going to do over here? I'm going to do this, 8 to the negative 1 third. Now, 8 to the negative 1 third is a weird number. It is. See, I don't know if you guys remember this, but negative exponents are location changers. What does that mean? 8 to the negative 1 thirds is the same as 1 over 8 to the regular third. Fraction exponents, all they have to do with is the location of the number. You're either in the numerator or you're in the denominator. Here's the good news about this. 8 to the negative 1 third is something your calculator will do for you. I am not going to worry about you remembering everything there is to know from Algebra 1 about exponents. We will review that, but it's not going to be included in this test. When I say not included, I mean this. Your calculator knows the answer to this. You can punch in on your calculator what is 8 to the negative 1 third power, and your calculator is going to spit out the number 0.5. Let me make sure I'm not lying to you, because that's a weird number. 8 to the power of negative 1 third. Yeah, my calculator says 0.5. But I already told you guys, I don't want any decimal answers for this. I don't. It's just harder to check them because sometimes they, they just are enormous. So math frack it. If I do math frack, guess what? 0. 0.5 is one half. That's the answer I want. One half. The answer is one half. Done. Done deal. Let's look at another one with a fraction exponent. 
and I'm going to make it look scary, it's actually not going to be scary. x to the negative one-fourth equals one-fifth. And you might go, oh man, so many fractions. It's so mean. Now, is the thing with the exponent all by itself? Yes, it is. So what am I going to do? Heck, I'm going to just start off by saying I'm going to take this whole side here to the reciprocal power, which is negative 4. That's what I'm going to do. What's it going to equal? Well, on this side, I'm going to have to do 1 fifth to the power of negative 4. Over here, all this junk would cancel. Negative cancels negative. I get x. So on the other side, I just have to pick up my calculator and say, oh, this is one of those situations where I'm going to take 1 fifth and I'm going to have to take it to the power of negative 4. And what does it tell you on your calculator? I'm not lying. This is the answer you're supposed to get, 625. It is. That's the answer, 625. Don't fight it. Negative exponents is something we're going to do a lot of in the next uh, unit. But for now, I'm just guaranteeing you, whatever weird negative exponent number you would get, it's going to result in something that you can math frack, or it'll just produce a beautiful, pretty number like 625. So, let's go one more. Let's go one more. And I want to give you something that looks a little bit different, a little spicier, but... Here we go. What am I going to do? Well, the thing with the power is already isolated. The thing with the power is already isolated. So I'm going to take this side of the problem, and I am going to take it to the negative third power. That means over here I'm going to take this to the negative third power. That is what I am going to do. This guy over here gets negative three over here. And what does that do for me? Negative cancels negative. Three, three, there it is. Bam. Fantastic. But what about this? When I punched it into my calculator, it said 0.125. And then I'm going to tell you, math frack that thing. Oh, math frack it. Well, it says it's one eighth. Okay, so it's one eighth. That's what it is. I don't like fractions. Well, let's bust it. I'm going to take this entire problem here and multiply everything by 8 because I don't like fractions either. I can work with them, but I don't like them. So I go 8 times 2x, that's 16x. 8 times 4, that's 32. What's it equal? 1, because the 8s would cancel on the outside. Well, I'm going to take away 32. And I'm going to get no more room, so I'm going to scroll down. So I get 16x equals negative 31. I divide it out, and I get x equals negative 31 sixteenths, which is not a pretty number, but it is the right answer. It is the correct answer for this ugly-looking thing that we started with. Okay? Yep, you can get some weird, ugly numbers, but it doesn't mean they're wrong. So, recap. We started with equations with radical form, where I told you rasbasaz or rakbasaz. Then we started looking at fraction exponent form, which is fine because, you know, that can sometimes translate perfectly into radical form. So, uh, then we had some negative exponents, things like that, but I told you at the very beginning, you have to put your calculator in the mode that you are most comfortable with. Um, for some of you guys, you're like, I like math print. For some of you guys, I like classic. Doesn't matter to me. I like them both. In fact, 
when it comes to doing stuff with fraction exponents like this, numerical stuff, I like math print. But I don't hate classic because I know how to do it. I've practiced. You're going to perform well if you practice well. Know your machinery. Know your calculator. Okay? All right. So, I've got one last thing, and then I'm going to transfer this because this is the end of uh, Unit 2, Video 5, Part A. I want to bring this back right here. Right here. This is a fraction exponent equation. It is. Totally is. What do you think I could do to solve it? I could take this whole side here to the second power. Then I'd have to take this to the second power. I just want you to know that this could have been written like this on your practice sheet. You're not going to see the practice problems until the next video, but I could present this problem to you with fraction exponent form, or I could have put this in root alone, square both sides and solve form. Either way, what would happen here? I'd get x plus 6 on the one side. I definitely would. Hang on. Ah, there was a bug on my screen. <laughs> I was trying to move it. Uh, um, that's what you would get. That is what you would get. Okay? Why is this important? This is the very last thing I'm going to tell you on this video. It's important because now you have a second power, which means you have a quadratic. So I'm going to move this over there. I'm going to move this over there. I'm going to get x squared minus x minus 6. I'm going to get everything on one side equals 0. And then I'm going to say, dang, that looks factorable. It does. And I'm going to factor it because it's really not that hard to factor. It ends in a minus 6, so it means I need a positive and a negative. I got to get a minus 1x in the middle, so it looks like this is a 2 and that's a 3. And that's how it factors. No fooling. So here's my answer, negative 2. Here's my other answer, 3. I have two answers. Those are my two answers. x equals negative 2, x equals 3. Here's the problem, and this is why this is the last thing I'm going to show you. One of these answers is not really valid. One of these answers is not true. Okay, how do you know if something's valid or not valid? I'm going to just write this one here. Here was the original question that I gave you. If I put negative 2 in for x, that would say negative 2. That means I'd have to put negative 2 here. What's negative 2 plus 6? It's 4. What's the square root of 4? It's 2. Well, wait a minute. 2 doesn't equal negative 2. This guy is not valid. Now, if you want, you can plug in 3, and you'll see that 3 is totally valid. 3 is a valid solution. Okay, guys, I waited till the very end to tell you this. When you solve these type of problems, you should always plug them back in to check them. All right? This is the first time I'm going to say this, but every single problem that I've worked out in this video, I picked problems that I knew if you plugged your answer back in, they would all work. But that's not always the case. See this one? If you plug negative 2 back in, it's not valid. We say invalid answer, or we call it extraneous. This is called an extraneous solution, and some books will call them apparent solutions. It's either this thing or this thing. They mean the same thing. They're synonymous in mathematics. Extraneous solutions, apparent solutions, mean you can work them out algebraically, but when you try to plug them back in, they are not valid. They're not true. That can happen in a radical situation or a fraction exponent situation. So what does that mean? Well, on the homework, I'm trying to do you guys a favor. On the homework, I checked every answer. So if it's in the answer key, it's valid. Okay, but on your test, when you guys try to solve the problem on the test, you might want to take your answer. Always 
plug your answer. Oh my god, answer. <laughs> back into the original. Plug it back into the original equation. Check for validity. If you don't, you might end up with an answer that's not a real answer. It faked you out. Okay. Now, the good news is part B is much shorter because part A, I had to cover all the crap. But part B, just a couple uh, follow-up questions. But remember, you can always pause, re-watch, rewind, do what you got to do. But um, you're going to find the assignment is in the next one. And um, as soon as you see the assignment, you'll know why I have a second video coming your way. All right. Hope your day's going good. Bye.